All right, hello there everyone and welcome to Innovation in Polkadot DeFi. My name is Peter Morick, I'm Head of Public Affairs at Parity Technologies. Thank you all for being here today. I think first we should do a brief round of introductions of everyone here. We have quite a large group and a lot of uh, things to get to. So let's start off out with uh, the organizer of the event today, Yubo. Hey everyone, uh, this is Yubo Ran, um, founder of Parallel Finance. I I am a um, first time entrepreneur, uh, started my first company in high school, dropping out, and then uh, spent some time in the VC space in the last four and a half years, both tradition, traditional VC and then crypto, running a crypto fund called Adesimal Capital. And then uh, spending some time with uh, one of the portfolio company, Jufai, on engineering works in 2020, and then eventually started Parallel Finance, and we built uh, all DeFi kind of solutions on the Polkadot space. Great, awesome, thank you. Ingo, you're up next. Yeah, I'm Ingo. Um, I'm a computer scientist from Germany. Um, I founded Kilt Protocol in 2018, I think, so quite a couple of years ago. Um, been there ever since, uh, worked from in the Polkadot ecosystem, I think right from the start probably, uh, one of the first projects which uh, started developing on Substrate and yeah, now we're here. Great. Dominic, you're up next. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Dominic. Um, I uh, come from academia originally. I did a PhD on computer science at Imperial College, uh, where I met my co-founder, Alexei. Uh, we did a protocol together on how to bring Bitcoin to other ecosystems, and uh, we uh, got approached then by the Web3 Foundation, started a cool collaboration to bring that into the Polkadot and Kusama space. And now we are uh, hopefully going to be live on Kusama soon with our Kintsugi network um, and excited to bring Bitcoin into the space. Thank you very much. Lucas, you're up next. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm, my name is Lucas. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Centrifuge. Um, been in crypto since 2017, sort of started to see the, started seeing sort of what what went on there, and um, ha we've been sort of focusing on bringing real world assets into this crypto world and sort of figuring out how to let people use the all of these technologies that we are building here for not just their crypto native assets, but also things like real estate, uh, commodities. Um, invoices really anything and um yeah centrifuge maybe it's been live um with a substrate based proof of stake network since last march uh we are um now getting ready to launch on kusama with uh, our network called altair and uh well when we know about polkadot we'll hopefully then on polkadot <laughs> last but not least the most recent Kusama Parachain slot winner, Kenny, congratulations. Thank you. Just to clarify, you know, I myself am not the slot winner. <laughs> um, I'm, Get in that. Uh, Get in that slot, Kenny. <laughs> hey, by the way, Peter, I, I love that that clean shave look, you know. Like oh, thank you. I yeah. did it just for you all. Nice, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so hi, my name is Kenny. I'm one of the core contributors to Manta Network, uh, and our Kusama parachain is uh, Calamari Network. And we're all about privacy. So uh, we use zero knowledge proofs to provide privacy to various parachain assets on both Polkadot and Kusama, uh, specifically for DeFi. Awesome. So I think we'll start with you. Um, tell us a bit about the experience, uh, you know, uh, both bidding in, uh, in in an auction, like gathering your crowd loan support, like how was the whole how was the whole process for you? I I would say right now that um, Calamari Network should definitely be considered an outlier. Um, <laughs> so you know, we 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 came in expecting chaos as per Kusama, and we. Uh, bit off more than we can chew from there. So uh, we, we started off our auctions pretty early before the auctions even started, right? A little bit after Kilt. Um, but, you know, if you just think of it from like sort of that uh, game or zero sum game theory-esque scenario, right? Like it, it kind of um, kind of 
pushed us against Kilt in the sense that you know there there are two projects there and then a bunch of other projects as well. But as soon as as soon as things started ramping up, people started getting excited, and so. I would say that you know that that early mover advantage is definitely there in terms of you know picking up on people's excitement, um, and I do think you know the the way that our parachain auctions kind of were laid out, um, there was there was um, I guess what we what we laid out as the rules for the allocations of the rewards versus uh, what features could be uh, supported by the actual auction, <laughs> and so you know the the misalignment there. Uh, caused a lot of confusion as well, which is where the chaos sort of really ramped up. Um, but you know, we are we are honoring all contributions, um, so that's that's the that's the good news for the community. Um, and yeah, I mean, overall, it's been a really fun, uh, long experience. This has been the longest two weeks of my life. I could definitely say that with confidence. Um, a lot of community interaction, uh, hearing hearing people on Telegram and Discord, and chatting with people all the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, the experience, looking back on it, I would say it was, it has been really fun and really, uh, really uh, learned a lot. <laughs> and though interested to see if you uh, agree that it was really fun um, and, and your experience going through. Um, and I don't think we've actually spoke since, uh, since you, you acquired the slot. So congratulations. Thank you. It's been a little hard to speak to anyone outside of the community chats these days, but you know, that'll... That'll change. <laughs> yeah, Ingo, I was gonna say congratulations. I don't think we've spoken since the the, the second batch opened. Um, how was it for you? Yeah, well, uh, actually, yeah, for, for us it was uh, better because we had only one week, right? <laughs> so yeah. Not so much. Uh, but this week was extremely extend, in, uh, intense. Uh, we also had uh, far more community interaction that we would ever have dreamt of, uh, which is uh, cool on the one side because uh, you see that there's actually people out there, right? <laughs> and it's not just uh, like okay, there's this uh, there's a Telegram group and then there's uh, people on Twitter, but then they. All of a sudden, they started acting out of questions, um, and some of the questions are really good. Uh, and uh, so that that was uh, very intense for us. I think uh, the the communication team didn't get any sleep in the whole week, um, but uh, it it was cool. And yeah, from a strategy wise, I can just second this. Uh, uh, being early is a good idea. Um, uh, because uh, then it's over <laughs> at one point and you can start working again. Uh, and yeah, I think, it, I think it went pretty well for us. Uh, we were ahead all the time. We also started early, very early, uh, earlier than you guys. Um, and uh, I think that was also a good idea because people were just uh, starting to throw uh, Kusamas into uh, into the votes. And uh, I think it was somehow expected that we start a little bit early, even though it was nowhere announced actually where when it actually starts. But we saw it starting uh, when uh, one project, I don't know which it was, uh, suddenly started there and said, wow, uh, okay, we can actually start as well. And then we did. And that was how it worked. So no big strategy behind that, actually. <laughs> Yeah, lack of sleep is uh, is is a pandemic in, in crowd loan uh, world. Um, so let's talk like uh, to be uh, uh, acquired slots. Lucas, what's uh, what, what's the next couple of weeks looking like for for you and the team? I wish I had a crystal ball. <laughs> well, um, I think the yeah the. I mean, you mentioned expect chaos. I think have no expectations at all is the right is the right way to go about it. Um, I mean, it already started with just the timeline itself. We had uh, most of our the first crowd loan was actually the first batch of auctions was a good try run. We did we try, we did a lot of stuff um, and had a, learned a lot of things from that that we then I think got significantly sort of more streamlined all the communications having people in, in the right place, making sure we can be reached um, and talk about what we're doing. Um, and sort of going into the second crowd loan was definitely easier than the first one. Um, and and I think sort of for the next couple of weeks, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be like getting people excited about what we're doing, um, sort of the massive use case that we're going after. Um, for Centrifuge, it's, it's an interesting, um, it's interesting for us because we are in a very different situation than most Polkadot projects because we are alive already. 
So we have like existing users, we have um, an existing chain with data. So we had to think about how we do this whole snapshot and give our existing users as, um, also part of part of Altair. And so that part I think is maybe a bit different and, and I am really curious to see what other, um, how other projects are gonna handle that in the future. Um, because yeah, that I think was, was maybe something that we had to uh, take into account as well. And so, so it was a bit like, we couldn't just fully focus on the, yeah. on the Altair crowd loan. We still had to make sure that everything else was running smoothly, um, and and we did. Yeah. So our, I think our our whole team was doing double shifts. Um, yeah, and breaking but, ground for folks, like you said, that'll come after and need to do the same stuff. So uh, appreciate the work on everyone else's behalf also. Uh, really, uh, the, the extra complexity is not to be understated. Um, let's talk, Dominic, we don't have any bridges yet. We need some bridges. When are we going to get a bridge? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, we're working hard on it. Um, so I guess for us, it was a, also a pretty crazy experience. Like, um, we originally started the project as like Polka BTC, right? So the idea in, in the beginning was to, to be actually a common good, uh, on, on Kusama and on Polkadot and like we discussed a lot we, we have these custodians that that take bitcoin because there's really no other way around it um and they have to collateralize their positions but then everybody we talked to that would potentially run a vault they were like yeah but where's our upside and so we eventually decided okay actually it does make a lot more sense to run this as a community network um and then basically i think when the second batch of auctions were announced we we're like okay we need a we need a new brand for kusama we actually need to come up with a proper name a marketing strategy an ambassador program so um that was super intense um we're getting there uh but yeah i i did get a lot of sleep the last couple of days and weeks um but i think it's it's really cool to see actually like uh the community behind it and what we're trying to do mostly is to partner now with the other projects that are already live or planning to go live uh, because really what we think is um, we, we basically start off with Bitcoin and using that in the other DeFi applications. And I think really that's the idea. Like while we are competing for all these slots right now, the idea is eventually there will be enough space, right? So, and I think it would be cool to have Bitcoin liquidity. And I think any other project that's live on the, on the system will profit from that as well. Um, and yeah, and then we have some cool new stuff that we're working on as, as well. Like, like uh, maybe you can do some Pepe Cash uh, that's native to Bitcoin as NFTs directly uh, on our power chain. Um, yeah, so it's it's an intense uh, experience to be honest. Yeah, but good. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's going to be really exciting when that uh, uh, you know multi-network interoperability becomes a thing and like. Uh, 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 I think it's uh, Jacob from Hydra saying in the chat, like all of crypto needs a good trustless BTC bridge. So let's get it done. Uh, Yubo, the youngest chain on the block. What's your uh, next couple of weeks looking like? Um, it's tough. It's very tough. Um, frankly, we just started the company five months ago, five to six months ago uh, of the whole, you know, parallel stuff. And uh, it's been quite a, in intense journey in the last five to six months, you know, starting from building the team, raising capital, you know, building products, and then starting the crawl loan, a lot of work. Um, frankly, we spend a lot of time thinking about how to build a product for uh, crawl loan. Um, we noticed that a lot of the, um, the problem exists for the crawl loan investors, one of them being the lack of liquidity. Uh, over the next 48 weeks for Kusama Kralong and then close to two years for Polkadot. And then the lack of hedging options for Kralong investors. They can't, they don't have another way to hedge their token rewards. What if it go down and so stuff like that? And so um, we started to, you know, research and then build a solution while we we're doing Kusama Kralongs. And then I think we are uh, about to launch uh, what we call auction loan 2.0 product. Um, so people can use our parachain to contribute it, uh, to a specific project. Um, the benefits will be, um, people can borrow Kusama with a under collateralized loan. Um, they only need to pay the interest payments and then get a full principal amount to support any project they want. Um, on the other hand, the lenders can also receive much higher, um, uh, uh, Kusama native returns, uh, much higher than 14% based on the current, you know, money market, uh, lending rate or borrow rates. And then 
uh, at the same time, they could actually exit their um, deposit positions before the even even before the auction started. They can sell that on our um, specialized designed money market with a discount, traded as a zero coupon bond, or they can wait in a queue until someone come in and, and to match their orders. So first come, first serve. However, they have to wait some uncertainty time, um, but then they don't have any slippage or any cost. So we sort of slipping the crowd loan investor into a lender and a contributor. Lender can don't have to take any uh, project specific risks, but they're only earning higher interest with you know, lower liquid, uh, bad, better liquidity. On the other hand, contributors um, can either contribute through the traditional way or with this leveraged way, right? They can borrow capital um, with under collateralized loan to contribute and get higher, you know, sort of return with higher capital efficiency. And so, you know, being part of the project issuers may make us realize the problem exists in the crowd loan space that we can better solve for those contributors and investors. And so, that's kind of what we really focus on. And then we hope that we can launch that product as soon as we can um, to the community. Yeah, it's really interesting. And it's gonna be interesting to see what other sort of interesting, either product specific to the crowd loan or gamification that, that teams uh, uh, use to sort of uh, bolster their their campaign to get a slot and, and, and raise, the, uh, raise the bond for, for a pair chain. Let's talk a little bit about product rollout. I think we'll start with Ingo here because you've had the most time to think about it uh, uh, since you had your slot, got your slot just a couple of a week or so ago. Um, so what's, uh, what's the product looking like? What's the rollout plan? Yeah, so um, we stated when we, uh, I think even before uh, we uh, we got uh, the crowd loan. So the first thing is, of course, start producing blocks and then looking at it, uh, if the blocks really come. And uh, as we have uh, external collators in our network, uh, we are currently onboarding the external collators. That's the first thing because th this is pretty new, and um, and uh, we, we do it one by one. So, so just not throwing too much chaos in uh, and uh, this is going to be finished pretty soon I hope and, uh, and the next thing that we do is then uh, that we add governance to our system and then we are going to add all the code functionality to our system and then we basically go into decentralization so we remove the pseudo key um, and uh, then uh, the product is basically live and kicking and there for everyone so that's that's the thing that we try to reach uh, we always said uh, between two or three months uh, so there's all, already a week gone of that so I'm um, but make good progress so we're still in the timeline um, and uh, so uh, this, this is basically what's going to come and I think the, the big task after that is actually um, getting uh, projects done right? yeah. I think we all have to somehow show the value of this uh, Kusama and Polkadot network and the value is not shown only by Kilt doing something or Kilt having a cool project it is done by seeing that Kilt and other projects of the ecosystem start working together and creating value which is more than the individual project and th this is the my hardest task right now where, where I'm working on and I'm, I'm trying to speak with everyone in the ecosystem and uh, try to figure out projects, uh, not not 10 year down the road projects, which are so complicated that we cannot manage them. But, uh, let's call them low hanging fruits, things where we can easily work together and see, wow, here you put identity on this DeFi product and now it, be it becomes a little bit better or a little bit more uh, user friendly or a, a little bit more interesting for the market or whatever. So uh, these things, I think uh, this is the most important task probably for all of us uh, that we have to do in the next uh, months and probably year uh, that, that we really show the value of why are we here, right? It's not just for having a parachain. <laughs> it's, it's here uh, to cooperate and to create value together. And th these are the things which are right now for me really important. And there's very, very interesting things. I'm not going into detail about interesting things, but uh, different types of projects uh, coming up for Kilt. And we're really looking forward to that because we have tons of ideas and others also have tons of ideas and I'm really looking forward to bringing them into life. So that's the biggest uh, challenge for us right now to find the cool things which can easily and fast be deployed uh, on, on different chains together using um, the power which we have now from Kusama, like XCMP and stuff. Yeah, that's great. Really looking forward to uh, realizing true multi-chain applications and and uh, 
use cases. We haven't really seen anything of the sort really work out thus far. Um, so really excited to see that come together and appreciate the, the sentiment that it's about working together as many chains to create a bigger future goal rather than trying to like, you know, do everything on your chain the way many sort of solo chains out there market themselves to try to do. Um, Kenny, you've had one hour, one day to think about your, uh, I'm sure you've been thinking about it already, but what's the, uh, what's the product rollout look like now that you've gotten the slot? Um, yeah, so I think uh, a lot of similarities to Ingo as what was just mentioned, right? Like our, our number one priority is enable governance, remove the sudo keys. I think that's like step one for any parachain project, right? We want to be as decentralized as not in control as possible. And then from there, uh, we will be enabling the token transfer, which will allow people to actually start receiving rewards. Um, same sort of time frame. And then uh, we are rolling out Mari Pay, which is our private transacting service for parachain assets. We'll be rolling that out uh, this year as well. So, you know, that's that's kind of on our short term ro roadmap. And then next year we'll be rolling out uh, Mari Swap, which is our private AMM DEX. And I was on mute. Awesome. Uh, Lucas, you touched on the specific challenges that you have uh, sort of turning on a parachain a little bit earlier. Maybe you can talk about that a bit more or also, you know, generally speaking, sort of the state of the product that you have that's live already um, and maybe some of those specific challenges, again, that you, you're, you're sort of figuring out a plan to bring them over to, uh, to Kusama and Polkadot. Yeah, um, so, so Centrifuge um, actually went I mean, we've been around for a while, four years now, and um, we've been sort of seeing how DeFi on Ethereum first developed and been continuously building out a product. And so today, um, sort of we've, we knew we wanted to deploy something before parachains were live and we wanted to actually work on a product and had users that just didn't want to wait. Um, and so, so we did um, sort of build our first version on Ethereum and then sort of started moving more and more to our substrate-based chain uh, we're today actually integrated into Maker. We're launching a, an Aave uh, market in, in the coming months, uh, which will allow actually users who uh, want to borrow uh, money against real world assets to borrow from already today from Maker in the future, also from like an Aave money market. And of course, as like um, as uh, the, the Kusama ecosystem uh, goes live, I'm really excited to also see how we can integrate Sort of these different new collateral types into uh, into Kusama. I think the exciting thing about sort of the assets that we bring and that's really unique to to uh, crypto as a whole is that these assets are uncorrelated and they are so much bigger than what we see in crypto today and allow us to go after these new users that uh, can't use crypto today because the six of us here on this panel, a lot of the people joining joining in the crowdcast here probably heard about crypto, decided they want to buy some, use it, um, and have crypto native assets. But if I look at my parents or my high school friends, they want to buy a house or pay for education. And when they want to borrow money, they don't care about using Bitcoin as collateral or using Kusama as collateral, but they actually have a ha uh, like an, an income or a job, right? And so, so our goal is actually to allow them to borrow stable coins so that they can um, finance their their house or their renovation. And so, so that, that is of course something that everybody in the world needs. Um, and, and so we're go we're trying to bring these asset classes into sort of every DeFi ecosystem, every niche that's out there. Um, one of the sort of with that, um, sort of broad vision, like one of the things we are doing is we have over 15,000, uh, token holders on Sony future chain today, um, where we've been, Sort of, there's been liquidity in the market for Centrifuge since um, uh, July 14th. Um, we've been sort of rolling out and growing, growing the community here quite a bit, and so this this means there's also obviously a, a large group of users who will be looking to start uh, using Altair. And and so for us, actually, our rollout will look like we did a sort of determine the random time point where we would where we sort of created a snapshot of the network state. Uh, and we're sort of migrating or 
copying over most of the state that we have that's relevant for Altair and um, actually sort of look at Altair as a fork from uh, Centrifuge uh, that will then develop and sort of diverge as um, I think Kusama and Polkadot are diverging. So in a way, it's actually that, that strategy was very similar to what um, how, how uh, Kusama launched. Um, and then from that point on, um, decentralize, uh, use the council, use sort of our token holders to roll out more and more functionality. Great, yeah, very complex yeah. to be yeah. sure. It's going to be sure. Sure. Yeah. seeing it all work out. Yeah. Uh, Dominic, uh, in terms of getting a, a bridge live on uh, Kusama, like what's that, you, you know, we heard from a couple teams that are deploying, you know, a layer one, obviously a bridge is something a little bit different. Like what's the process look like for getting a bridge connected and turned on? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, the I guess the biggest technical challenge for us is clearly uh, we have to interact with Bitcoin as well, um, which out of the box, um, if you ever done any scripting on Bitcoin, it's a little bit tricky. Um, and yeah, you, you need to have actually pretty solid understanding how to build a bridge in a decentralized way. I think there's also a reason why currently on Ethereum, there's no such decentralized bridge deployed, right? So it's it's really hard to build these relays properly. Um, it's hard to test it. And uh, let's say if something goes wrong, right? On Kusama, you, your power chain, like with sudo keys, you could kind of roll it back, but you will never be able to roll back the state on Bitcoin itself. So you got to make triple sure that whatever you're doing in, the, in this cross, in this you know, true cross-chain setting is actually working well. Um, so that's that's our biggest concern, and that's why we basically have a test net already running since March. Because yes, audits are great, and we try to stick to like best practices in security engineering. But the best test is like actually users interacting with your platform. Um, so that that's really good for us. And then um, yeah, we we basically we're concentrating on this Bitcoin bridge right now, um, but then we we want to move towards like these two bridges. So we're going to have the Kintsugi network on Kusama and then the InterBTC network on Polkadot. Um, I think Maker has a really, they give a good talk about like how risk management works. So core bridge should be like super stable. It should be not a ton of innovation, but you want to have stability. Um, but around it, you can do a lot of innovation. Like uh, you can, for example, allow an EVM to do access to state of Bitcoin, you could build Bitcoin derivatives on top of our bridge, for example, or you can add new assets on, on Kusama, we can go a bit wild, like we can obviously add like a Doge bridge as well, we just need to like a Doge relay, uh, we can add like Pepe Cash and, and that sort of stuff. Um, we can also play around with different trust models. So we did like the hard part, right? Everybody can just become a custodian by collateralizing similar to how makers die work. Um, but we can obviously also support uh, if there's like vaults that want to create like a new asset, like a centralized version of Bitcoin, like our infrastructure is set up to support that as well. Like if anybody would run it, create a new rap Bitcoin representation that's centralized, go ahead, you can use our infrastructure already um, to do that. Um, so there's like all these angles uh, where we can see that the bridge basically developing. Um, and yeah, but it's been been quite a challenge to, to get it like decentralized from the start. But we strongly believe that if you want to build a decentralized piece of technology, it needs to be decentralized from the very get go. Um, otherwise, there's little motivation to decentralize the tech later on. Yeah, Gav had some uh, choice commentary on this point in the Polkadot water cooler recently, um, sort of generally saying like projects that launch in a more centralized manner and then try to back into decentralization over time are going to have a really tough time of it so it's better to do the hard work of decentralizing uh these networks from the start and rather than doing the reverse um so i think we're hopefully all building with that that mindset uh in the polka dot ecosystem because i don't know about y'all but i'm here to stay so um no flash in the pan uh <laughs> hot crypto project, yada, yada, yada. Like I want to be here talking to you all in 30 years. So Yubo, uh, I know you're, like I said, uh, still s s sorting out like what the, what the full roadmap looks like, but you know, what's the first product you think you would be, you would look to get live once you do acquire a slot. Hmm. Great question. Um, so I think we're going to have, uh, a few products going to go live. One of the most important one would be the auction loan product that I just described, which uh, helped this, you know, sort of 
you know, investors to better manage their risk and then their capital efficiency. Um, um, along the side, we have been we have been spending a lot of time building um, the basic you know DeFi primitives, including the money markets and then the uh, liquid staking solutions. Um, and I think that those two products will be launched as well. Um, it's just that we're going to launch with this sort of capped um, capacity, and then we want to make sure that our product is really safe, um, and then um, so that we can scale up to larger amount of uh, users. Um, and then at the same time, so. If if the you know audience have used our product, they can see we have sort of a, a you know a early versions of Exaprify or sort of like a a, a wallet question wallet experience. So they can see their um, the balances around across different chains. Uh, at the beginning, we only support our own chains and then uh, the relay chain, um, and then uh, in the meantime, you know, sort of adding on some other um, options to support uh, all of the parachains so that they can manage and see their uh, total Polkadot ecosystem plus Gusama ecosystem, you know, asset distributions. And then um, uh, what's your, you know, crowd loan contribution? Where is it? And then how much you get and et cetera. Um, so that will be sort of an initial state of the product. But I would say like the most uh, exciting product for us would be the under collateralized lending uh, auction loans. Uh, I think one of the audience asked like, what is sort of the, you know, yield that we can provide? Um, so this is, this is a, uh, uh, floating rate money markets. And uh, it really depends on the utilization ratio. So say that if there are over 80%, 85% of the capital has been borrowed out to do crowd loans, then the interest rate on our platform will be around 30, you know, supply rate will be 33 to 35-ish, uh, um, you know, based on the current curve. So basically people earn much higher yield than staking, but they take a little bit suffer in terms of their, um, uh, their liquidity. So we will have like three tokens. One we call C token, which is the crowd loan tokens, uh, C dot and C Kusama, highest return, but then, you know, relatively lower liquidity. They can exit it, but then they have to take a little bit, you know, fees. Um, the second one is called X Kusama, which is sort of the staked version of, you know, Kusama or dot. And then they earn around 14% uh, organic returns, but then, you know, the, the, the liquidity is much faster, up to seven days for Kusama. Uh, they can also exit it through our uh, special design, you know, uh, sort of zero slippage AMM that they can get out um, pretty fast. And then the last one will be the P Kusama, which is the parallel money market Kusama. Lowest return, maybe less than 14%. We estimate it to be like a couple percent, mid single digit. Um, but then instant liquidity, you can withdraw anytime. So on a higher level, we provide this sort of a saving account so that people can don't have to care about how to use those um, combinations of protocols, and they shouldn't be thinking about it at all. It should be just sort of a robot advisor type of stuff. So like how much return you want to have, how much liquidity you want to have, and we help them allocate their Kusama or DOT into different uh, categories, and then they will return this sort of com combined capital uh, return, um, you know, allocation strategies. So that's sort of the a little bit next step product that we plan to uh, roll out. Really exciting stuff. Uh, it, it, interesting to hear you sort of get get your uh, your the mind your mind around how all these things are gonna gonna interact with each other, um, and then bring a lot of very interesting options to users uh, across the board. Um, if folks have questions, be sure to put them in the question box. If you put them in the uh, if you put them in the chat, they're going to be hard to pull up. So just make sure that you hit that little plus sign and change it to say, ask a question or just hit the ask a question button and drop it in there. Um, I will ask a couple questions from the chat. I think one of the first, the most upvoted ones, the perfect one for Lucas, which asset class from traditional finance or, you know, the world are you most excited about bringing into DeFi? Oof, there, there's so many different ones. It's really, that's, that's a tough one. I think the most excited asset classes, I think, are the ones that are really badly served by the traditional financial system. And this is actually a very, very vast, vast category of assets. Um, because we know like the banks of today, they like do something if they can develop a product that will serve 50 million Americans in the US. But if it's like, if it's like a couple of hundred thousand borrowers um, that are like slightly more exotic, usually they're like, oh, this is not big enough for us. So I think 
and and this is also like how some of the first assets we started working with are like are exactly those kind of uh, asset classes so for one of the ones is like emergent market lending um i think it's a huge part of the world has very bad access to financial products um and and so for example branch is a company we work with that give out short-term loans to people in uh, markets that um, have almost no banking infrastructure so things like that i'm very excited about because i think it really is changing um, the financial system is sort of getting to a point of where what we, I think, believe crypto should be, which is uh, really making it more accessible, removing these barriers of entry um, for the, for everybody, right? Not just for the tech savvy or for the sort of the very well banked um, U.S. market, but really like sort of opening that up. And I think that's that's what I would say are the ones I get most excited about. Yeah, it's actually not all about, you know, fucking the banks and all the rest. It's actually about giving giving service to the people that they don't serve. And that, that accomplishes yeah. the whole long term anyway. We don't have to be purely combative all the time because you're right. Like us sitting here in Miami, we don't have financial infrastructure issues really, right? Like it's, it's not necessarily about us in the long term. It's about everyone. Um, Let's see if there's anything else here in the chat and we can go back to some of the uh, uh, regular Q's and A's. Um, the topic of this panel is innovation in Polkadot DeFi. So I was thinking we could probably go around the horn and uh, each detail what you think the most innovative thing that is being done or will be done in Polkadot native DeFi. Uh, that is, you know, uniquely enabled because of Polkadot. So thinking multi-chain, thinking, you know, really scalable and customizable uh, framework to build on. What's like the most interesting thing in Polkadot DeFi that you can uh, either have seen or you can imagine happening to sort of thinking about how things are going to develop. Um, let's randomly select Dominic. Let's go with you first. All right, cool. So. I think one of the big innovations in the Polkadot space is that each of these parachains, parachain products will have to focus, I think, on one specific area. So you'll have parachains specializing on, on privacy, decentralized identities, on real world assets, on Bitcoin, on DeFi. Um, and the cool thing is they will be basically innovation hubs that, that will foster projects building on top, right? So I imagine that most of these projects, like like our chain and probably all the others here, like will have uh, capabilities to let people innovate on top of that, right? So you'll get like a, a Bitcoin and like hub, you get like a privacy hub and people just take it and, and, and build on top of that. But because you have Polkadot and Kusama on the XEM level, you have this built-in multi-chain integration, which makes it super easy for users to Kind of switch around between these different power chains, which I think is the like the big promise of it. And I think the auctions are great for that because the projects really need to work on like what's our our what do we bring to the ecosystem. Um, and then I think it's it's beyond that uh, as well. Like um, like we're gonna be integrated to Cosmos as well. So I think like slowly, slowly we're gonna get to this multi-chain version where you have use cases, but it doesn't really matter which L1 you're using. You can just the user just mingles between them uh, as much as you want. Awesome. Caspar's uh, the art on the wall behind I'm in a hotel room in Miami. It's not that interesting. Uh, <laughs> let's go. Uh, Yubo, you've, you've already talked about some fairly innovative products around, uh, you know, crowd loans specifically. Um, but what else, whether it's something you're developing or you see other people putting together or something you just imagine could be possible what's like mm -hmm. the most innovative thing you see in Polkadot DeFi? Um, I, I think that, you know, in my opinion, I think Polkadot, um, people might under misunderstand that, you know, people are building uh, for Polkadot, I, but I think that Polkadot serves as a, uh, a, a launch pad for radical ideas that requires to build on top of blockchain itself, right? So you either can choose, as a developer, you either can choose to build your own smart contracts on some layer one chains where you launch your own blockchains that is powered by Substrate and then connected to the Polkadot network. First of all, you get this shared pool of security. Second of all, you know, you get this true, you know, um, cross chain levels, sorry, uh, contract level uh, uh, interoperabilities. So what I can see uh, likely is that um, uh, things like very complex 
derivative can be achieved on Polkadot space um, on, on top of Substrate Chain. Um, things like you know securities um, and the privacy related solutions um, that Mental Network is doing, I think, is really innovative. Um, and I also see that identity, uh, decentralized identity that killed this build, building, is like super fascinating concept that can enable like real world uh, users and plus centrifuge like you know sort of this. Um, real world asset ranging into the existing uh, systems. But at the same time, what I see like even more interesting would be the fact that um, um, we can provide this sort of uh, a second layer of customizations to uh, customize that for a specific use case. For example, we utilize this sort of schedule transaction capabilities uh, to perform some actions. In the DeFi space, what I can think of is sort of something like uh, a um, you know, dollar cost average strategies, which is kind of harder to implement on Ethereum, but I think it's easier to do on um, the, the subject chains. Um, and then also things like, you know, off-chain workers that can enable a lot of the HTTP requests uh, through some, you know, off-chain uh, servers to get data. And I think that's fascinating to, to combine. Um, it's supposed to be like this ideas of like, you can build your own AWS. And then there are so much like uh, capabilities that can be built on top. Um, and I see the general thesis or principle here is that anything that is much more complex, that is harder to achieve through a smart contract platforms, I think Polkadot can take that opportunity and do make it happen. Agreed. Um, you got a couple shout outs in there. Let's go with Ingo. Um, what's the most innovative thing you think you can imagine in Polkadot DeFi? Maybe something specific to how uh, true decentralized identity could be used um, now that we're, we're we're on the path to actually solving solving this long uh, uh, long term problem that's that's been in the in the crypto space. Yeah, exactly. So I'm I'm not from the DeFi space. So I'm probably the wrongest person in, on this panel that you can ask about the future and the, and the most innovative things uh, which are, which are going to happen on DeFi. But uh, as we noticed uh, in the last couple of months, basically, uh, is that uh, decentralized identity is a, a hot topic for uh, for for DeFi. Obviously, uh, on the one side, there's coming more regulation in, and uh, and on the other side, actually, the DeFi doesn't really want that, and uh, we have to find middle ground uh, somewhere so that uh, that maybe DeFi projects or uh, decentralized exchanges and all those uh, basically can somehow identify. Uh, their users without knowing who their users are. And this is what, what basically people need, obviously, uh, and without storing anything other than storing the transactions on the blockchain, which are happening anyway. So uh, th there's a lot of things uh, which are going on, obviously, and uh, there's a lot of interesting projects um, starting to speak with us and asking how they can utilize um, killed as an infrastructure, and this is exactly how we be how we want to be seen. We are an infrastructure, right? So you can you you are a piece of of this pocket of world that you just grab and you use it, and uh, then uh, hopefully you can do things faster and better than you could do and do them before. And this and this is just where we want to stand, and we want don't want to be the DeFi. Um, uh, a, decentralized, a decentralized uh identity uh, protocol or infrastructure or layer or whatever uh i think it is important that we uh, that, that we are open to everything not only defi but also to uh what, whatever other like health and uh, uh other uh, applications that you might think of in or education and so on where you need verifiable credentials and decentralized identifiers uh, and bring those things together. And this is exactly what happens then when, when you think it uh, together, for example, with Centrifuge, right? Uh, centrifuge is uh, talking about real world assets. Those real world assets are probably somehow identified by an identifier. And you can use this uh, decentralized identifier uh, uh, methods to bring it into the DeFi world and to identify the assets on one side and uh, the virtual counterparts or uh, whatever on the other side and then bring them together with the people who actually own them or own part of it and uh, all this. So that's, I think it's a universal thing and uh, it's, it's something which is necessary as an underlying infrastructure and uh, we see it from there. Yeah, uh, lots of interesting things, right? Like you can imagine scenarios in which like in order to access a DeFi product right you need to be able to verify that you are a real person and not a bot which could help eliminate some of the uh 
uh, manipulation that we see a lot in, a, in a lot of places. There's a, a lot of a lot of different uh, applications. Uh, Kenny, over to you. What's 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 hot in Polkadot DeFi? Um, I think you know we we talk a lot about like composability, interoperability, right? But like I think what it really boils down to is being able to introduce a decentralized way to provide as a service solutions, right? Like if you think about uh, ecosystems and other chains, um, you know, like Ethereum, for example, right? Like how do how do people add new features to their projects, right? You can fork code, um, then you bring in a team to maintain that code, um, or you continue to fork the other code. But um, the, 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 the problem here is that like, you know, if, for example, if I wanted to, if I wanted to add privacy to a product uh, on chain right now, right? Like I can either use that privacy service or I could fork the code. Um, but nowhere can I just use the privacy or use that privacy product as a service, right? And I think with Polkadot's interoperability, that enables as a service, right? And so that, that kind of gets back to the heart of what everyone was discussing about, um, you know, being able to specialize in one particular area, right? With like Manta and Calamari, we're specializing in privacy. And yeah, we're launching Manta Pay as a product so that people can have something tangible to actually use. But at the end of the day, I think like as you know, Ingo mentioned about being infrastructure, right? I think that's that's exactly where all these all these products uh, are are headed for all of us here, right? It's like if you need privacy, you can you can plug Manta Network's privacy directly in with integrating into your application rather than having to force people to go to Manta Network and use Manta Pay, right? Manta Pay can be that privacy utility underneath. Same with Kilt with Identity and same with like, same with Interlay with BTC, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like it, it's, it, it, I think like the, the beauty of it here is like the user experience on Polkadot, especially with composability and these as a service type approaches is going to be much different than if we were building on you know, I guess, namely Ethereum, um, we're not, we're no longer needing to be recognized as Manta network or Calamari network. We are now the utility for privacy, right? Just as all of your lights are all on and we all have internet connection, but we don't have to worry about who's our internet provider. Well said, last but not least, Lucas, close us out. Sorry, I had to unmute. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, the, this is something that, that I'm really actually curious to see about how interoperability in, in Polkadot will work. I think sort of, I think two of the main, the two things that made Ethereum most successful were first EVM and then second the ERC20 token standard. And I think people a lot of time underestimate just how important it is and how such a simple standard with such a simple interface um, makes makes it very, very easy to work with different things, right? Like as long as you can express whatever it is that you want to do as a token, then it can be used with whatever uh, other project you want to use. And, and that is um, the thing that that we as a Polkadot ecosystem and, and, Kusama, and, and Kusama sort of building these parachains need to think about um, going forward because that's that's ultimately how we can uh, build um, th this crazy stuff that we probably have no idea will ever, like, will, will exist. Like, I mean, if I had to make any predictions few years ago, I probably would have been wrong in pretty much everything. That's why um, but, but sort of the underlying thing is that... Hmm? Uh, that's why predictions Thanks are again? fun. Because they're mostly, you know. yeah. So I mean, my prediction, I think my prediction maybe is that, and, and this is where where Substrate has a, a few really cool features is that way more is going to be actually automated and protocol to protocol interaction and not like user yeah. trigger interactions. And so like, and that's sort of seeing DeFi today. It's like maybe Yearn was like one of the first ones to say, okay, we're going to take these five different DeFi protocols and like make sure we balance. Uh, capital allocation most efficiently across everything and do this with some automated scripts but like we're still like very very much like driven by by human interaction sort of on chain and and so if i think of like what's the evolution of DeFi, i think that's where it will go like much more um yeah. like not bought but uh yeah chain to chain interaction and i think that's going to be really cool because like with uh, off-chain yeah. workers with like the 
the X XCMP will, will have cool stuff happening here. Yeah, automation is cool and key and also something I think right regulators globally understand is actually one of the big benefits of crypto is like there's a lot of things that happen in financial markets that are pretty manual that don't need to be manual and are safe for consumers if they're automated in a secure way um, which which uh, these these uh, crypto networks uh, hold a, a great amount of promise to to accomplish and then the other point there um, is like <laughs> I guess my final point on uh, innovation in polka dot DeFi is like I don't know the world is, does not yet understand the crypto world. The develop, develop crypto developer world does not yet understand like what uh, asynchronous DeFi ecosystem is going to look like. And I think a lot of smart people think it's actually going to be a lot better in a lot of ways than a fully synchronous uh, system all the time uh, and open up like a new design space for people to do things that are really interesting and cool and automated or not. Um, but anyway, um, I thank you all. Go ahead. Like the async, I think I've been in web development pre async. I was like writing the first Ajax, like asynchronous JavaScript X, um, <laughs> XML, XML request. Um, and, and I think, yeah, I mean, like the, you couldn't imagine what it looked like. And now, like everything we do in the web is async. And I sort of think, yeah, there will be the same shift towards like scalability, towards like building stuff that just isn't possible with synchronous systems. Yeah. Um, the future is not well in linear mono chain smart contract platforms. Uh, thank you all for joining today. Really appreciate it. I think we had a really great, insightful uh, uh, conversation. Really, really good points from everyone. Um, really looking forward to seeing you in New York, Lucas, next week, and the rest of you uh, as soon as as soon as we can. So, uh, everyone, take care, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.